now we're joined by Avraham Levine, Alma Research and Education Center. Talk more about it. Welcome to TVP World. Thank you very much. Uh, so let's just start with uh, some of the basics. And I think, you know, this is all fresh, this is all raw. Uh, we were discussing this a bit earlier as well. I mean, we're, earlier we talked about it was retaliation uh, by Israel. And now if Iran potentially acts back, where are we now? Has this shadow war now become a real war? How do you classify it now? No, I definitely don't think uh, this is what I would call war. I think uh, what happened in Gaza in the past six months would be a full-scale war. What's happening with Hezbollah on our northern front is closer to a war, although the, there's no ground maneuver. Uh, with uh, Iran, it's a tit-for-tat, and uh, I hope it's over, but, uh, you know, didn't bring my crystal ball today. All right. Well, nevertheless, I think um, we we're talking about uh, these strikes and I think the reaction that we're hearing so far, uh, I'm curious because uh, if we look at the domestic Israeli response, and I believe it's very much uh, from, uh, I think, a very a conservative ultra-nationalist, uh, Mr. Gvir, who described the strike on Iran as feeble or lame. So how is that being interpreted by uh, the rest of the Israeli government, the Israeli people? Well, I think there are two, uh, two opinions here that you could uh, clearly see. Uh, one would say we have to be very aggressive in retaliating to the massive attack from Saturday night and uh, letting them just get away, letting Iran get away with a direct attack from their territory with 300 cruise missiles, ballistic missiles, UAVs, uh, is unspeakable. Uh, to others, uh, it's more important to keep things stable, to keep on uh, cooperating with U.S., European countries that actually helped us at that Saturday night with those missiles and UAVs, and, uh, and maybe uh, retaliate in a more measured way. If this was Israel, then I think this was a measured attack, uh, not a massive attack of hundreds of missiles, not hitting uh, in, in civilians, uh, inner cities. Uh, this might be a retaliation. Uh, just uh, if you look at the choice of the targets, it seems plausible. Uh, I wanted to ask, because essentially, are we looking at a situation where Israel is dealing with war on three fronts, the Gaza Strip, Hezbollah, and now Iran? Uh, would you agree with that statement that Israel is now entering a situation dealing with a war on three fronts? I would. I would completely agree that this is not a uh, Israel-Hamas war. It's an Israel-Iran war that was fought for a few months uh, via proxy in, in Gaza called Hamas, was fought via the proxy in Lebanon called Hezbollah, and suddenly Iran decided to join the picture directly. And if that is and indeed the case... That, I would okay. accept that definition of a three-front, and I think that's something we weren't looking forward to. Okay, and... and to I, I want to follow up on that. Down. I want to follow up on that. So if that is indeed the case, how long can Israel engage in that war uh, without the assistance of external allies like the U.S.? Because I don't think... Is the U.S. really keen on assisting in this war? U.S. is keen on keeping things peaceful uh, and safe for their soldiers in the Middle East and for their allies. That's not only Israel, that's including Saudi Arabia and Jordan and Egypt. Um, so I think, uh, are they keen on a massive war? No. And I think uh, it would have been unheard of a few months ago when many, many soldiers were busy in Gaza against the Hamas threat. Right now, the ground maneuver in Gaza is very slow. There is no ground maneuver in Lebanon or Iran. So in that aspect, I think we could, uh, I think we could maintain a stable situation, even if we are continuing this... Uh, retaliating to each other, which I hope will stop. Right. Um, I mean, it's it's difficult now to see where it's going to go, but let's go back a little bit. I'm just curious because, I mean, we had those terrible strikes over the last weekend by Iran, that first time Iran attacked directly. We know that over, I think, almost 99% of the missiles were brought down, uh, no injuries. 
Um, but now the, the tit for tat as we hear and we talk about it. Um, but actually, what about April 1st? Because I'm, I'm just curious your view, because on that front, I mean, that was an attack by, I mean, I think Israel has not stated that it has done this, but uh, I think it's, it's pretty clear that it was behind that strike on the consulate uh, in Syria, in Damascus, um, killing those um, Iranian generals. Now, Iran probably would argue that was the main call it not, Cassus Belli is the wrong word for it, but that was the reason why they struck as they did. So did Israel potentially maybe miscalculate here, um, or where do you see this go? Because some would argue that that was the cause of Iran's actually striking first. It, it's definitely the argument that Iran is posing, and if we see their targets, they were clearly make, uh, trying to make that point, because they tried to hit Air Force bases that, uh, to their claim, uh, the attack came from, the Israeli attack towards Damascus, if that's what happened. Uh, so it's clear that that's the point that we're trying to make and keep it in those boundaries. And I think in the same way Israel is trying. Just to make a small point, there was one, uh, one young girl uh, was, was uh, hit uh, in, a, in a bad way from the attack in the south, in the Negev. Uh, but to touch the, what you asked, yeah, that might be the trigger. Uh, the uh, the attack on uh, on Irani uh, generals might have been the trigger. I don't think it's a miscalculation. I think it's a risk you have to take if you're trying to make a point. Uh, and if there is a point that Iran has to learn, is that if they're uh, training and funding and founding and supporting in money and weapons and strategy, proxies all around Israel, they're not immune. Mm -hmm. So if there is a point to learn, I hope they did. And they're trying to retaliate and save face. And I, I hope we, uh, we end with that. All right, just uh, very, very briefly. I mean, uh, we can speculate all we want here. But of course, do you think that, I mean, Mr. Netanyahu has shown that he's very resolute in his actions, very much not listening, very much like, even to his biggest uh, supporter, uh, which is the United States and President Biden, who has become a critic very much. Um, will he now will he be satisfied with this, or could there be pressure now to, to do even more if Iran does something else, or how do you see this fold out in the next uh, days or weeks? I feel in the past uh, week and a half, uh, maybe a little more, maybe two weeks, U.S. and Israel are working uh, pretty much together with a lot of meetings that show cooperation and for, uh, for knowledge about uh, what's going to happen. I don't think uh, anyone was surprised uh, on Saturday night. I don't think anyone was surprised uh, last night. All right. Well, look, I mean, this is a continuing developing story. Uh, we get more information all the time. Uh, we appreciate your insights there. Thank you so much for joining us. Avram Levine there. Thank you so much. My pleasure.